I've known a lot of people who've had a little trouble with this word obedience. Many of us have an internal struggle with authority. When I was in seminary, the worship professors were all over this preaching the lectionary. The lectionary was the great authority for all United Methodist preachers. It was the end all and be all. And they sold it so hard that my well-learned predisposition against authority reared up and screamed, you can't tell me what to preach. And so for a while, I would not even touch all those wonderful resources that were available to bless my life as a preacher. Trust and obey, there's no other way. Never quite liked that song. Had a catchy tune, but I said trouble dancing to it. I wanted to dance to the beat of my own drum. I am what I am, as Popeye used to say. There was a lot of rules. I didn't care much for it as a kid either. At home, you know, no rough housing in the house. And, uh, and they didn't care much. The parents didn't care much for me saying something. Well, if, it, if they didn't have a house, it wouldn't be rough housing. If I took it outside, it would just be play. And, you know, those kind of definitions don't really work when People are upset with you already. Uh, don't hit your brother. Well, he hit me first, but I didn't do that very often anyway. I was older. Uh, listen to me when I'm talking to you. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. No playing ball in the living room. Okay, okay. That's no fun, but okay. Um, if you don't go to school, if you don't go to church, you cannot go outside and play. If you're too sick to go to church, if you're too sick to go to school, you're too sick to go outside. And I like going outside to play because there was no playing in the house, no roughhousing, no ball playing. But there was this one time, okay, maybe, there was a lot of times actually, but there was this one time that I'm talking about. And uh, the folks were gone. And I was in charge because I was the oldest. And somehow, I couldn't, I don't know how in the world this happened, but a football game broke out in the middle of the living room. And uh, there was this one play, I don't exactly remember what uh, the play was, but I do remember the end result of the play being a slightly broken lamp. A nice glass lamp, my father had given to my mother and uh, that wasn't good but luckily my father was a very handy guy and in his workshop downstairs there were all kinds of glues and adhesives and so being the eldest I took it upon myself to glue that broken piece back into the lamp. And then we, as a, as brothers, we uh, said that we'd keep this conspiracy. We'd not, uh, you know, we weren't going to break. And um, it must have been a good job because they never, ever found out, ever. But, but many, 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 many years later, after the statutes of limitations had run out on the crime, uh, we actually told mom and dad the story of the last football game ever played in the living room. What, what about you? Maybe hearing the word obedience doesn't necessarily transport you back into your parents' house, but it might make you think of another kind of bad experience, maybe something that happened at elementary school or being yelled at on the bus or being... Uh, on the receiving end of a scolding from one of the ladies in the neighborhood. Back then, it really did take a neighbor. I mean, it really took a, a village, that's the thing. It really took a village, and the neighbors were pretty good at keeping track of you. But whatever the negative feelings that word conjures up in your mind, sometimes it's difficult to relate obedience to the joy of following Jesus. Many times at church in my youth I heard 
Thou shalt not, more often than I heard about the grace of Jesus, creating the belief in some that religion or faith is mostly strict obedience or adherence to, to a set of rules and regulations. Obedience needs to be redefined when it comes to our faith in Jesus. It's not as much about punishment as it is about saying a big yes to God. How do we redefine our perception of obedience? When, when I am looking to erase a false spiritual definition that has been embedded in my mind about God and the way God works in the world, I, I go to the Bible. I may be stubborn or dense, but it's not enough just for me to hear about it, I've got to see it for myself. And a wonderful example of a big yes found in the Bible is seen in the story of Mary, Jesus' mama. Mary was a teenager when the messenger from God visited her. I can imagine she was doing what most teenagers did back then in the first century. You know, sowing, planting, preparing meals, contributing to the family's economy in whatever way she could. Mary's family was not greatly wealthy. Uh, not, they, were, they were simple people, more along the, the poorer side. And she would have been doing all that she could do to help her family survive. As different as Mary's life seemed, seems from the lives of modern teenagers, and some of the de details might be different. I mean, the time and space, the technologies, the uh, expected roles, the government and religion. But there are some similarities, and I can imagine Mary's struggle as being similar to a struggle for survival. And in the midst of this struggle for survival is when Mary was visited by the angel, a messenger from God. And the, and the messenger brought Mary news that she was, she was going to become pregnant, a pregnant, unwed, unwed teenager. Um, in our Christmas celebrations, we quote this messenger and say, and says it's good news of a great joy, but in fact, to Mary, the teenage girl, this was hard news. This was scary news. This, this was difficult news to receive. One does not have to be a teenager to know the, the sinking feeling that accompanies unwelcome news. Throughout our churches and communities and neighborhoods, people are receiving news that causes fear and confusion all the time in our world today medical diagnosis, a pink slip, divorce papers, note from the teacher, uh, a call from someone that a loved one has passed. As Randy Newman is heard singing, it's a jungle out there, disorder and confusion everywhere. No one seems to care. Well, I do. Who's in charge here? It was in this state of fear and confusion that we find Mary. This is the Mary we discover in Luke chapter 1, a real-life teenager in the midst of a deeply challenging and stressful circumstance. Sometimes we want to rush ahead in the scriptures to get to the, the good part of Mary's story, failing to observe that obedience is not learned when our lives are comfortable and easy. Obedience is forged in the middle of life's messes. And in the middle of Mary's mess, she realizes that God is asking her a question. Mary, will you be obedient? Will you say yes? That moment for Mary was not about avoiding punishment per se. Rather, it provided the opportunity for Mary to say, a big yes to God. Could God see beyond Mary's situation? Could God see all the possibilities for Mary's life? 
Could God see a miracle waiting to be birthed? And absolutely. God could see and did see the divine possibilities for Mary's future, but all Mary could see was what was right in front of her. Unwed, poor, uneducated, unimportant, insignificant, soon to be rejected by her family and community. Mary did not face an easy yes. When we asked the, when, when asked a life bending question, however, Mary chose obedience. Mary says, yes, I am the Lord's servant, she says. May your words to me be fulfilled. And the angel left her. Like Mary, some of us today find ourselves struggling. Like Mary, some of us may be scared out of our minds and do not know what to do next. Like Mary, our lives might be a little scandalous. The first step is to ask ourselves right here and right now, what would it mean for me to say yes to God? What is my big yes? Through our Advent and Christmas seasons, there are many things competing for our yeses. What would it look like to give our yes to God, to, to minister to those people around us who need us most? What is, what is it that God is calling us to say yes to today? Whatever you are facing in life, today is the day you can say yes to a new attitude. Your yes today means accepting God's grace to endure whatever. Regardless of what we are facing, what you are facing, obedience is more than simply wishing for circumstances to change. Obedience is not a half-hearted, well, God, maybe you can help me. Obedience means believing that God can do a miracle in our lives. Then aligning ourselves with what God wants, what God wants, not what we want. As we've heard, it said of Jesus, all of his life he lived God's way. It is an out of control, doesn't feel right. Maybe it's right. How can this be? Yes. Every time I read Mary's response to the angel, I'm in awe. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Here's a teenager facing misunderstanding and rejection from her family her betrothed, and her townspeople. And yet, she agrees. Mary affirms the, the bedrock truth that undergirds our discipleship. I am the Lord's servant. After all is said and done, after we have explored all the possibilities, we need to decide, am I a servant or am I a master? Is my allegiance to, to the Lord or to my own desires? Sometimes it takes great turmoil in our souls to come to the place of submission, uh, the place of submission and growth. But we got to come to it. We must come to it. Even before Jesus was conceived, Mary was faced with the decision. Will I obey and make way for this, this king? Or will I take the easy way to avoid difficulties and pain? To her everlasting credit, Mary's response of faith is what our response is to be as well. 
I am a servant of the Lord. May it be to me as you have said. May it be so. Amen.